This cash will either get spent or get invested in the market. Pent up cash combined with low rates, the development of the vaccine keeps us positive on equity markets in the near term. We see an opportunity for value investors. Tony joining us now over the phone. Tony, how do you determine whether the rotation trade has gone too far? Yeah, uh, thanks, Lisa. Good morning. Uh, happy to be on. Um, so I think the rotation trade has legs, um, you know, particularly this, this value trade that uh, we've been talking about. And for a couple of reasons, one is there's a lot of skepticism about that. And that's primarily because uh, over the last at least 10 years, if not more, any value rally has been short-lived in terms of duration. And so there's a whole generation of investors that have been trained to be quite skeptical of value. And I would contrast what we're seeing today versus the prior decade. First of all, the starting point matters. And we're starting from a point of very wide valuation spreads. Valuation spreads are the widest they've been in 20 years. That's a really big deal. Um, secondly, uh, the earnings trends look really good for cyclical value stocks. And this is true every time we come out of recession. So what you have is very easy compares for cyclical value stocks. And um, that's further boosted by all the fiscal stimulus um, that we're, we're talking about here. And so if you look at historically coming out of recessions, and we looked at the last four recessions going back to 1980, every single one of those value has outperformed strongly for the, for the two-year period coming out of the recession. And so that's why I, I, I think this, this rotation that we're talking about there has legs. So, Tony, uh, someone like Howard Marks might say, well, sometimes when things are priced with a discount, there's a reason for it. And right now we're looking at the big tech companies still minting cash. We're not out of the remote world yet, unfortunately. And we still have airlines, for example, Delta yesterday reporting a more than $12 billion loss for the annual 2020. At what point do you say we've gone far enough? You know, that's basically, at what point are we looking at the pain and saying it's been sufficiently baked in and it can go further versus it's gone too far versus the reality of today. Yeah, so, so some great points there. Two nuances I would like to introduce. One is still the valuation spreads are still very, very wide uh, versus history. So we're nowhere near historical valuation spreads. That's when I would, would start to pull this back on this trade. The second is the importance of quality, which you highlighted. Um, I couldn't emphasize that more. Um, one of the things that I think is really important in a portfolio is that you have balance in your portfolio, and, and that's one of the things we try to do at BlackRock. And so we have a big chunk in the fund I run, Equity Dividend Fund, we have a big portion of the portfolio in high-quality compounders because that's what's going to add value over time. But we also have an opportunistic bucket, and that's where this, this I think this value trade lies is in the value bucket. But absolutely, uh, you don't want to just buy beaten down cyclicals without being thoughtful about stock selection. I think stock selectivity is key amongst that group of stocks. Tony, before good we balance let you... sheets with good quality. Tony, before we yes. let you go, I'd love to get your thoughts on the banking sector. We got reports from J.P. Morgan and Citigroup in Wells Fargo this morning. Did anything in those earnings make you change your call, either affirm your interest in buying or selling any of the banks? So uh, while the stocks are down this morning, I think what we've heard in terms of the earnings reports is actually pretty positive. Um, now, we had the similar reaction, by the way, with third quarter earnings. The stocks were down on third quarter earnings, yet over the last three months, you know, the KBW index on banks is up 39 percent. Um, the two biggest positives, I, or, or a couple of big positives I see, um, is one, uh, credit. Credit remains very strong. We're seeing reserve releases across the board, some bigger than others. Uh, but reserve releases across the board. And that's really important to me from a risk-reward point of view. Um, we're also starting to see return to buybacks. Uh, and that's really important because that's why you own these things is for the free cash flow and the return of capital in both dividends and buybacks. The Fed is, take, is taking, starting to take the constraints off or at least ease those constraints. And so we're seeing buybacks resume. And that's really powerful because they have low multiples. Yeah. And so... The low multiples are on depressed earnings, actually, when you think about loan growth and net interest margin. And so that's a unique setup, low multiples on below normal earnings. Plus, when you're buying back stock, they're buying back stock on the cheap. And so that's highly accretive to earnings. So I look at these reports as positive. I, I, you know, they run up into the earnings announcements. So I, I think we're just seeing a temporary pullback today.